Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night if you guys are out there in the world. Recently, there was a huge article that got put out and it was spreading very rapidly talking about the UAE and Saudi Arabia joining BRICS. Now, the big thing about this was the petrodollar deal. For those that don't know, the petrodollar deal has been the biggest foundation piece for the US dollar. That maintains the US dollar's reserve status. It's the number one reason why we focus on Saudi Arabia and what's been happening around the U.S. dollar for a while. When we really look at the U.S. dollar right now, like I said, with the petrodollar deal being the foundation, once cracks start to deform on that foundation, it's time to watch out and it's time to prepare for what's coming. One big thing that we have been talking about was. BRICS expanding and going back against the, the dollar. Now, could this be a PSYOP? Could this just be a big distraction away from what's actually happening? 100%. Saudi Arabia did not officially join the BRICS just yet. We know this because this recently just came out yesterday. Um, and again, you know, this is something significant to watch for as we still continue to see talks between, you know, the, the actual BRICS and Saudi Arabia. Uh, they've been expanding rapidly, and they've been preparing for this new currency that they're supposedly trying to watch. Now, the big thing that I have been watching is gold, right? Because central banks are stockpiling gold, which we will get to here in a second. Um, and the big question is, will we eventually see a revaluation of gold? In my opinion, we could be getting close to that. But also... Outside of Saudi Arabia, yeah, they haven't joined the BRICS yet. Big, big word there is yet. Three countries agreed to launch BRICS currency to challenge the US dollar. Now, it doesn't say that this is going to be gold backed, but we do know that the BRICS were really looking into a gold backed currency for a while. Um, and that's the number one thing that we've been really kind of addressing is the idea of gold backed currencies becoming a big deal. Um, one thing that I've also mentioned is how we could have uh, with tokenization, gold fractionalized. If we have that, we could eventually be kind of marching into a world of the unknown, but also a world where we have DLT, blockchain-based technology, implemented into the global financial system on permission DLT and blockchain-based networks but also CBDCs, stablecoins, all tied back to an ESDR with, again, gold being the thing that the entire system is backed by. Now, if you go back in time on why the gold standard did not work, it was mainly due to the idea that there was not enough gold. But if you could fractionalize gold and you could revalue it and have those fractions of gold priced at a significant amount, well, then guess what? Now, a gold back system actually works. But also remember, Basel 3, that is coming. That is going to change everything around U.S. banks. Because if you guys don't know, the U.S., their reserves around gold, in my opinion, have been extremely inflated. I don't think that we actually have as much gold as we actually have. And Basel 3 is going to really put a spotlight on that. But also, if we scroll down here, we could see three BRICS countries agree to launch new currency and take on the US dollar. They said that it's actually almost ready. Beyond that, we could actually see some of uh, the areas that are waiting on this or planning around this. So first and foremost, India and China are yet to give their nod for the formation of a new currency. To launch this currency, we need the political consent of the BRICS countries, three of which have already expressed their support for the idea. We are waiting for the reaction of China and India. 
In conclusion, the only thing that's stopping BRICS from launching their new uh, currency is political consent from India and China. The rest of the three original founding countries, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa, have agreed to the BRICS uh, currency. The extended new members are yet to come to a common consensus with the BRICS currency. But the big question is, what does happen if they do launch this currency and all of them really say, all right, well, guess what? We want to utilize this currency instead of the US dollar, including if, again, Saudi Arabia does join the BRICS. Things are going to get very interesting very fast. But again, is BRICS and all of these moves made by BRICS a PSYOP? Is it a distraction method? Or is it an accelerator for the new system? Which I already outlined, right? Gold, gold backed with DLT, blockchain. It's very interesting. Also over here, from the OMFIF, central banks and the revival of gold. This got posted on December 11th of 2023. So the fight against inflation here we have China's gold reserves versus holdings of U.S. treasuries. And we can actually see U.S. Uh, treasuries plummeting while gold is skyrocketing. I mean, hell, go all the way back to 2020 when we first started to uh, really see the change in scenery around the U.S. dollar uh, treasuries. But also, this has been in a downward uh, plummet since going all the way back to around roughly 2011-2012. And then again, look at the steps on gold going all the way back to 2008, 2009. And we just recently talked about how we never really bounced back from 2008, 2009. Look at gold. That's a major step up from 500 to 1,000 tons. Then in 2015, from 1,000 all the way to almost 1,700 And then gradually they got to 2,200 plus tons. Now, also, here's gold holdings in tons. Now, again, I do believe that the U.S. is inflated on their gold holdings. We don't know. We can't say for certain. There has never been a full audit on this, um, but it is definitely interesting to say the least. But here we actually have 2000 to 2022. No change at all for the U.S., but we can see other areas where we are witnessing major change. Russia, China, India, and these are three of the BRICS countries. So it seems as though the BRICS do have a plan, and it, does, it really is centered around gold. Here's the percentage of overall reserves now held in gold. Look at China. This is uh, pretty significant. And even Russia has been gaining speed here, and India as well. Again. I keep saying that I believe that we are about to witness something very significant over the course of the next few years. Beyond that, Black Swan Capitalist posted this clip. This is about a minute long. Can't stress this enough. Central banks are stacking up on gold for a reason. It's not just for show. There's a major move behind closed doors towards a gold-backed blockchain-based settlement mechanism that levels the playing field, a.k.a. We really look at XRP and the XRPL because it has been purpose built for something like this since going all the way back to 2012. You don't want to get ruled by the U.S. on a worldwide basis. So particularly China, but Russia and some India, some of the other countries are in the process of creating a dual system of payment of currency uh, to counteract the uh, the US dollar and so these central banks are buying gold as a reserve currency will they use gold to back a new currency or a basket of currency will they use a a crypto kind of currency backed by the Chinese government we don't know what I do believe, though, is that at the end of the day, you will end up with a dual world in terms of system of payment and the, the, uh, the currency you pay. You don't want to get ruled. Now, remember what he said there, right? A cryptocurrency or a basket, a basket of cryptocurrencies. That is the ESDR. That's what I was talking about with the ESDR, with gold, CBDC, stablecoins, all mixed in together. 
none like we can't come to a conclusion on what is going to be included here we don't know what's going to be fully adopted but there's a few players that i have handpicked out and really kind of talked about why i hold all of them you know h bar casper xrp xlm q and t algorand i mean some of these are incredible projects even xdc don't forget xdc a lot of these projects already are infiltrating the global financial system in some way shape or form but beyond this right as we look at gold buying remember hsbc recently just tapped ripple's medico which if you guys don't know ripple did acquire medico to to launch security token custody this was back in november of 2023 before that we see hsbc adding fuel to the tokenization fire with gold focused offering this is tokenized gold this has been leading the way in terms of a spotlight put on it because as we really look at what's going on it seems as though gold dlt blockchain all in bed with the global financial system is something that we need to be watching for and the central bankers and the big banks and all of the large players out there they're focused on on this heavily also recently imf managing director Kristalina georgieva crypto is not exactly money this is a significant quote and this might go over a lot of people's heads because they might say what crypto is not exactly money what do they mean by this crypto is money they just don't want they don't want to accept it. No, crypto actually isn't money. It is technology that could revolutionize the way that money is moved around the world, how money is settled. This is why crypto technology is so damn crucial to focus on in terms of the idea of actual technology and not, oh, it's going to replace the US dollar. It's ridiculous to say that. Listen closely to this, though. Is what we see in crypto. What is the IMS view on crypto? in what looks to be a very unique moment for this investable asset? Our view is that um, we have to differentiate between money and assets. When we talk about crypto, we are actually talking about an asset class. It could be backed up and in that sense more secure, less risky, or it could be not backed up and therefore a riskier investment but it is not exactly money. It's more like a money man uh, management managed fund. So when we look at money, there we have the uh, uh, central bank digital currencies and they are indeed a digitalized form of, of money. Is it possible to have the private sector play a role in this area? Yes, of course, private sector has played a role throughout the history of money. But we have to be very careful to inform the public about what exactly in front of them uh, the private sector has uh, placed. Um, I um, um, like the notion that we can, we can e in enhance the payment systems with private sector participation, uh, but we have to be careful not to mislead the public that crypto is equivalent in all cases of money. So again, as we really look at what is happening here, in my opinion, as we look at the technology aspect of crypto and blockchain-based technology, right? The IMF, the BIS, the World Bank, all of these elite organizations, they understand that this is already infiltrating the system. It's already starting to morph into a much larger snowball effect that is only going to continue. They know that the time right now is to focus on the utility, focus on the big players, focus on the ones that are actually creating something of value that could change the entire way that we think about money, the way that we think about how money is moved. That's what we should be focusing on. Far too many people look at Bitcoin and say, oh, well, this is, this is a safe haven away from bankers and from you know, the US dollar. That's all good to say and talk about, but at the end of the day, that is not what's actually happening here. 
And that's only going to get you so far down the road. There needs to be some type of viable use case. There needs to be some type of utility focused on um, that is going to reinvent the wheel and have real world value tied to it. Beyond this though, we also have over here, the adoption of Ripple's technology stems from the intertwined challenges of the credit markets, bond markets, central banks, and global debt. These are the hidden motives behind the gold revaluation, the World Bank's report on XRP and XLM as potential stable coins. Black Swan Capitalist posted this. This is about almost four minutes long. I'm going to speed it up by a little bit. But listen closely to what is being talked about here. And remember, right, we know that we are now in unprecedented times where it's almost unpredictable on what's going to be happening next. But we could also look at things like the debt. We could look at how in debt the U.S. is, how much the U.S. is printing, what's going on around the world, the moves being made. We are at a significant moment in time where this technology could revolutionize everything. It could change the entire way the global financial system is working. And also, it could solve a lot of the problems that we actually have right now in terms of debt and inflation. But focusing on this video. It's that credit which is going to be the real problem. So uh, the really nasty consequences are going to be against credit. And credit includes not only bank deposits, not only bonds, which basically are a promise to pay um, interest plus um, the principal at the end of a period, and not even equities, because equities are actually credit. Um, what happens is that you part with, um, call it money or credit, if you like, um, some means of, uh, of, of a company being able to pay its bills in return for a slug of the equity. What is the equity? The equity, effectively, is a perpetual promise to pay you um, uh, the share of the profits, your share of the profits in the company. So all these things are credit. Um, credit is the way in which the whole world actually revolves. And it's not just in financial markets, in terms of our uh, personal relationships. Someone comes in, let us say, to mend a window in your house. Um, you know, he does the work and then he submits a bill later. Between doing the work and submitting his bill and you paying it, he's effectively giving you credit. Uh, and you expect that to be the, you know, both parties expect that to be the relationship. Credit is the way the world works. We don't use money. We, money is just there to back up credit in terms of value. When we get worried about the value of credit, then we go into real money. That is, I suppose, in a nutshell, the situation I see developing as we get more and more worried about the value of the credit. We've got bank deposits. How healthy is my bank? You know, we've got um, uh, government bonds. Um, how healthy are the finances of the government? Um, can they finance uh, can they finance their borrowing um, going forward? Um, if the answer is no, then do I really want to hold on to those bonds? What is the prospect for corporate profits? Corporate profits, I mean, again, you know, I've given credit to a company in, in return for a share of those profits, um, and it looks like we're heading into recession. Am I going to, you know, what's the value of that of that credit, as it were, to me? So these are the fundamental questions I think everybody has to ask themselves, and they can best ask it by understanding that they've got credit. It's all these financial bits and pieces are all credit, and where um, they actually think they own something in fact, they've just, all they've got is a promise to pay somewhere down the line. And that is the thing. What's the value of that promise to pay in these difficult times ahead? It's that that more than anything determines the value of a currency. Because what is currency? Currency is faith in uh, the issuer. You know, currency is credit. Just go and look at the Fed's balance sheet. You know, if you've got dollar bills, it's in there as a liability. Um, if your bank has got reserves at the Fed, is in there as a liability. What's the value of that liability? Well, it's not tied to, to international money anymore. It's merely tied to the faith we have in it. And if that faith starts evaporating, it doesn't matter what the quantity in circulation is, if that faith that starts evaporating, then uh, you know it's goodbye, goodbye credit value. Uh, and so all these things, I think, are going to have to be considered by people in 2024, particularly since it's becoming increasingly apparent that the US government is stuck in a debt trap. Now, again, as we look at what's going on, this is the perfect, like, like the soil is already ready for XRP and XLM and a lot of these great DLTs and blockchain technologies in the space. We are just waiting for the next big move. And what is that next big move? Because we already have the, the BIS, the, the Bank for International Settlements, working with Ripple. We already have um, documents from the BIS on a lot of their projects that is tied in with Q&T 
and API use cases and viability around instant settlement. We also know that XRP has been working, or sorry, Ripple has been working with a lot of these great um, central banks and major banks uh, incorporating X XRP and the XRPL into the tech stack as well. Outside of all of this, it seems as though all of the connections lead back to my main thought process here, which is we are witnessing central bankers stockpiling massive amounts of gold. We are seeing them talking about central bank digital currencies, tapping into DLT blockchain based technologies. We also are witnessing a significant change in the horizon around the global monetary system, um, headwinds around uh, debt concerns about what's going to happen next with inflation. We have BRICS moving heavily against the US dollar. We are in wild times right now. So would you write off the idea that we are about to see gold revalued, DLT blockchain-based technology tapped in to solve a lot of these problems? I mean, in my opinion, I feel as though the, the whole world right now is on center stage and we are just waiting for the finale, which is incorporating and implementing blockchain-based technology and DLT. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me over on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Also, guys, 63% off right now over on NordVPN. If you guys do want to go check it out, links down in the description below as well as the comments below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.